a long haul, long and tedious campaigns for the candidates, the internal bickering within the parties, the in and out of the courts, plus the fear of violence. It turns out to be a peaceful run in the Odo governorship race. Now, a new man, Rutmia Kirudulu, will be at the helm of affairs in the state. All that's left is a huge task of putting things back on course. While the APC is savoring the victory at the just concluded Ondo governorship election, the PDP is accusing the electoral umpire of complicity. The party's flag bearer in the state, Mr. Itai Jagade, says the exercise was rigged from inception, and INEC is behind his failure at the poll. That's a focus tonight on the program. Many thanks for joining in. This is Politics Today live on China's television. And we're live right now on Facebook. You can watch us and comment and be part of the show. Thanks for staying with us. Now, welcome. Again, I'm Sulaiman Ayalede. One would have thought it's done and dusted and the parties would move on. But not so fast as many are still talking about the issues before and even after the election. Today, the PDP has said it is rejecting the outcome of the election. This morning, some other things happened right there at the premises, even of the uh, electoral umpire and the Ondo, Ondo governorship election. Uh, uh, governorship, the governor-elect, I meant to say, has been speaking, and he's been having congratulatory messages and a couple of other things happening within the APC and the PDP just this afternoon is coming up strong on what they think about this election. One issue that definitely will be taking front burner today are those other things that definitely you're picking up from the APC camp as well as the PDP camp. But first we have the reactions from first the governor-elect of Anambra State, Rotimi Akeridolu, a senior advocate of Nigeria, of Ondo State, I beg your pardon. You said you're going to revamp the industries, you're going to bring them back on stream. How soon should the people of Ondo State be expecting some of this industry to start working again? I, I use the word revamp when I was talking about the educational and the infrastructures and co. I, I use this one. But when it comes to the issue of industries, I've argued yeah, during my campaign that it's clear to me people use the word wrongly. They say to us, some industries are moribund. Most of these industries are dead. So it's not easy to wake up a dead person just like an industry to can wake it up. But the important thing is that industrialization is important to us. And we are going to have to get as many people as are interested. We have the sand for glass industry in the south. It's not necessarily we are going to go back to Oluwa industry. Oluwa, the furnace there might not be able to is 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 already the technology is no longer in use. So all we need is to have people come, provide the enabling environment for them, then they start another one. And it might be in the same premises. There's nothing we already have this in there, but it's not necessarily that we are revamping Ulua, but we are having a new industry that will produce glass. We have industries that will do on ceramics, like we have in the form. We have thinking about what we have on cement that's supposed to be in the Euclid's area and co. So those are things we are talking about. Is that before now, and I know that in the in the next few weeks, in the next few weeks, many more will come. Before right now, I don't know why some of them believe, or probably they went around all candidates. But a number of people have been here to say that, look, this is what we want to do from China, from Japan, and co. They have shown their interest in whatever industries they want to have. So the important thing for me as chief executive of the state is to give enabling environment for industries to thrive. And again, where necessary, partner with them so I can have the public a uh, private partnership, PPP, and get a few industries, a number of industries on ground. And when we have the entrepreneurship, there will be cottage industries here and there that will now more or less like uh, hold the economy in back. One person that, uh, maybe your former friend, but one person that all of us know that gave you a, lot, a huge support last time, is not on your side, I mean, at least before you went into that election. And so that's a curiosity of a lot of people. 
we will think that you do not have that kind of support this time around. And how come you are able to pull it through all by yourself? I believe that the party included everybody. So the party gave us support. And whether we like it or not, that will be larger than what an individual can give. Mm. And because if you have the party behind you, a national party for that matter, it's larger than what any individual can give. So I, I believe that whether there are individuals, there are governors, whichever one, whatever they did, they must have done through the party. And I want to believe all of them went through the party to give the support. Rotimi Akirodulu, senior advocate of Nigeria, governor-elect of Ondo State. He's been speaking there, talking about uh, the things that need to be done uh, as soon as he gets on board, talking about industrialization, revamping the alien and moribund industries. And he's also talking about international connection there, uh, seeing how best he can reach out to the international communities and see what they can do for the people of Ondo State. He's also not unaware of... Uh, the problem of funding of some of these things and also trying to bring everyone on board uh, recalling how it went just after the primaries that saw to his emergence.